Hello, my name is Ben Lovely. I'm an electrical instructor with Thompson Rivers University. This short video is on the classroom assessment technique, directed paraphrasing. The central goal of directed paraphrasing is to have the student take a complex idea or lesson and paraphrase the idea for a specific audience. By restating the idea in the student's own words, the instructor is able to ascertain the level of understanding the student holds. An added benefit of directed paraphrasing is the exposure of the instructor and other students to another way of looking at a certain idea. The term directed is especially meaningful for this assessment technique. By stipulating different audiences, the students must struggle to relate a topic to those with no background in the field. This can help make connections for the student and reinforce their understanding. Directed paraphrasing works best in a small classroom setting where complicated theory is explained. If the goal of the class is to foster understanding, having students paraphrase a theory is a good way of assessing that. As an example, an electrical student is learning about Ohm's law. The class covers the derivation of the basic units of current, voltage, and resistance. The student sees examples of these concepts applied and solves group problems. Ten minutes before the end of class, the instructor hands out paper and writes the prompt on the board. In your own words, explain volts, amps, and ohms to your grandma. Students are dismissed from class after they finish their directed paraphrase. Advantages of this strategy include allowing the instructor to determine how well the students understood a given lesson. The instructor can use this feedback to structure future lessons and explain the topic in a different light to students who may not be understanding. Having students paraphrase concepts can help aid in their comprehension and communication of information learned in the course. Finally, it forces students and teachers to consider the needs of their audience when communicating. Limitations of this strategy include the sometimes considerable time and effort required to assess directed paraphrases adequately. Further, the paraphrasing skills of some students will not improve unless the instructor provides some focused, individualized feedback. This can be very time consuming. Lastly, it is difficult to establish qualitative criteria for a good paraphrase and to express this criteria to students. What are best practices for direct paraphrasing? Well, the choice of paraphrase topic must be an idea worth distilling down. The idea can't be too simple or too broad to paraphrase effectively. Also, the choice of directed audience must be well planned. The audience should be realistic yet challenging. An added challenge could be to direct the paraphrase to two vastly different audiences. Because of the time and effort required to mark lengthy paraphrases, it is best to let students know how much time and how long the paraphrase should be. Finally, try the exercise yourself before handing out and see if the limitations are realistic. Feedback can be given to students by individually marking the submitted responses. Criteria for marking should be how accurate is the paraphrase? and how suitable is it for the intended audience. I intend to make use of social learning by breaking the class into small groups and have the groups assess the responses based on the aforementioned criteria. Each group will work together and pose their final response to the class and myself for review. As Robert Brault said, the average teacher explains complexity, the gifted teacher reveals simplicity. This strategy is geared towards revealing that simplicity, that understanding to the student. <laughs>